the types of random samplings we can have. Now I'm going to warn you, there's a wall of text here. That's okay. We're going to talk through it a lot to understand it. Then we're going to solve our problems where we decide what kind of sampling we have. So type of random samples. There's three types that we're going to talk about. And just don't stress out so much about it. It's just a definitional thing. They're all random. They're just different types of random. That's all. So we have something called a simple random sample. This is the one that we usually think about of a randomized sample taken from the entire population. So for example, we put the names of every student in a school in a bowl and we start drawing names. So that's like the easiest kind of random uh, sampling we'll do. We want to study the entire population. We'll just put a, a certain number of them, a subset into a bowl, shake it up, or put everybody, I should say, uh, the entire population in a bowl, like everybody in a class or everybody in a, you know, in a school, in a, in a bucket, and then draw names out. So it's taken from the entire population and it's randomized. So simple random sample. That's, that's, oftentimes what we do, sometimes you can't do that, but oftentimes it is done. Next, we have something called a stratified random sample. Notice it's just a different kind of random sample. What does the word stratified mean to you? Stratification in geology is when you have rock layers or any kind of layers, when you dig down and you can see the layers, you know, the sediment and it gets compressed and turns to rock and you can just see all the layers. That's called stratification. Here, stratification means, for instance, the population is divided into groups and then a sample is taken out of each group. So for example, we put the names of the girls in a bowl and the names of boys in a different bowl and we draw 10 names from each bowl. So it's just a different way of doing it. We could put everybody in one bowl, in which case we would have a simple random sample. But a stratified is when we take our population, we put it into different groups and we just sample from those different groups. It's called stratified, uh, stratified uh, random sample. Now, which one is better than the other might depend on exactly what you're studying, right? We're not trying to decide here what is better or what's the best kind of thing. We're trying to understand and identify the differences. So simple random, put everybody in the population in a bucket, shake it up, start drawing names. Stratified, separate your population into some groupings like boys and girls or men and you know women or different age groups or something like that. And we do sampling on those different groups that we have set aside. Now the third and final time of type of random sample is we have a systemic random sample, right? So this sample is chosen from the population in a specific interval. So for instance, questioning every third person who comes into a store, right? So we wanna study everybody walking into a restaurant, everybody walking into a store, or so we then uh, stand and we start asking questions. This is the kind of sampling that's often done when we're trying, when we have a presidential election or a small election, and then the re reporter or somebody will stand outside the door and they'll do, do exit polls. They'll ask every fifth or sixth person, right? So that, it's not really a, a random sample. We haven't uh, put everybody in, of the population in, uh, it's not really a stratified random sample because we're not separating into groups, right? But it is systematic, systematic. So I think I said systemic before, it's systematic. Systematic means every third, every fourth. And as long as you're like, like clockwork taking every third one, then you're kind of randomizing what you're doing because you're not, you're not uh, you know, asking only the boys or only the girls or only this age or only that age. You're, you're catching the randomness because you're every third person and you're assuming that's gonna lead to a random sample. So from the top, for the random uh, samples that we have, we have a simple random sample. We put the entire population in a bucket and draw names. We have a stratified random sample. We separate the population into one or more groups and draw from those stratified. That's what that is. And then we have another kind of random sample called systematic, where we just ask every third person or every fourth person or every fifth candy bar or every 10th car, something like that. Now those are the good kind of samples, the random samples. Let's talk about the quote unquote bad kinds of samples. The bad kinds of samples are called bias samples. We have two kinds of bias samples, all right? Remember, both of them are bad. It's not that one's worse than the other necessarily, it's just they're both bad and we wanna learn about the different kinds of biases we can have. First one is just a convenient sample. So it just means that the sample is easy to collect, but it does not accurately represent the population. So for example, if a student surveys five friends in first period, well, why is that, uh, why is that uh, a convenient sample? Well. Yeah, it was easy to ask my five friends, but it's totally not representative of like the school because I'm only asking my friends and I'm only asking first, first period, people in my class. So basically, if it's convenient, if it's a little too convenient to get your data, it's probably biased. And we call it a biased convenience sample. So you don't want to be convenient. You don't want to be what's easy for you. You want to do a true random sampling, which takes more work. The second kind of bias 
that we have here that we're going to learn about is a voluntary response sample. So the sample is made up of volunteers to participate. For instance, a student asks for volunteers to participate in a survey. If I ask you, if I call you on the phone and say, hey, would you be willing to take a survey you know, for a $2 gift card? Okay, well, yeah, it's data, but if, if, you, if you're volunteering, um, then I, it's by definition not a good sample because people who are likely to volunteer, especially for a gift card, they might be more likely to not care about the answers, whatever, you know, I'll just get my gift card or, or maybe they have tons of free time. Maybe the people that are volunteering are the kinds of people that love answering surveys. And maybe those kinds of people are not exactly good representation of the entire population. So the bottom line is, if you want to sample, you really do need to have a somehow cross-section of the entire population that you're studying. So if it's a little bit too easy for you, then it's called a convenient sample. It doesn't represent the population, and it's a little bit easy, easy to collect, but not so great as far as representing the population. And if I ask people for responses, that's a big no-no. You generally don't want to do that because it's leading to bias. People who answer questions and they, you know, uh, they just do it because you ask them to, it's not always a good representation uh, uh, for the entire population. So problem number one, it says Nate wants to know which uniform the school's basketball players prefer. He asked his friends on the basketball team. First of all, is this a random or biased? Well, this is a biased sample because he's asking his friends. And notice, okay, what kind of biased sample is it? Well, we look at our biased samples. Let's go over here, uh, right here. Convenient sample or voluntary response sample. I guess you could kind of say it's a voluntary response sample because he's asking his friends and you're kind of, you know, your friends are agreeing to do it, but really it's more of a convenient sample, a convenience bias sample. It's easy to collect. That's really the key thing here. And you're doing statistics, you want to make sure that the data you're collecting is not too easy. If it's easy to get, it's probably biased. We're asking your friends, um, that's a small group of people, it's already biased and it's just too easy. It's called a convenience uh, biased sample. So for number one, we're gonna put biased and we're gonna call it convenient sample. Right, and I may abbreviate that next time, so I'll make sure I spell that right, convenience, right. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. It says, Helen wants to know how tall the corn in her field grows. She records the height of every fourth plant on each row in her field. So before you try to decide what flavor is it, uh, you want to ask yourself, is it biased or is it random? Well, this is a random sample. Why? Because I'm not just looking at, you know, a certain corn plant in one corner of the field. I'm doing my best to look at the entire population in some sort of random way. I'm looking at the height of every fourth plant on every row. So I'm looking over the whole population, right? So is this a uh, systemic random sample? We're not doing a stratified sample because we're not dividing, uh, we're not making two different groups or uh, of corn plants or anything like that. Uh, the best thing that uh, applies to this is systematic random sample. Look at the example here. Questioning every third person who comes into a store sounds an awful lot like looking at every fourth plant on each row. So systematic means, okay, one, two, three, measure. One, two, three, measure. One, two, three, measure. And that does randomize things because you're doing it like clockwork throughout the entire population. Systematic means you're taking every fourth or every fifth one, so to speak. So this is a random sample and we call it a systematic random sample. If I can get my little papers right. So we call it random, uh, systematic. Or you could just call it systematic random sample. All right, let's take a look at problem number three. Kaylee wants to know the general or the genre preferences of people in the book club. She selects 10 of the 50 names of people in the club out of a cup and asks them. All right, so is this biased or is this random? Well, she puts it in a cup. She's selecting from a totally randomized uh, situation because she's putting names in a cup. So we know that it is a random sample. That's good. This is a simple random sample. Why? Because a simple random sample takes the entire population, like putting every student name in a bowl and drawing names. So it is a simple random sample because in this case, we're talking about people in a book club. We put everyone's name in the, in the hat and we only select 10 of them. So that's a simple uh, randomized way of doing things. 
It's not stratified. We're not making different groups. It's not systematic where we're looking at every fifth person. It is uh, what we call a simple random sample. You put everybody's name in a hat and draw names. It's a simple random sample. All right, problem number four. It says, Damon wants to know how long his classmates spend reading each day. He asks the students in his class to raise their hands if they will participate in the study. Okay, you know right away it's a voluntary sample because you're asking, hey, raise your hand if you'll answer my study. You know, and so that is going to be biased and it's a voluntary response. For instance, student asks for volunteers. And that's just generally a bad idea. You see people online asking for, hey, will you answer my survey? Well, your results are not really useful because you're only asking people who are willing to do it and that can introduce biases. So this is called biased voluntary, right? So biased voluntary response, All right? biased, voluntary response. Two more problems. Problem number five, it says Penny wants to know which electrolyte drink the athletes at her school prefer. She names, uh, or she picks the name names of five players from each team out of a bowl and asks them. All right, so this is a random sample. She's pulling names out of a bowl. That's good. And it does appear uh, to be uh, randomized. However, we think that this is a stratified random sample because we put it into groups like different layers out of some stratification from geology and draw from those different groups. So putting the names of girls in one bowl, boys in another bowl, drawing 10 names from each, that would be an example of stratified. In this case, uh, we put the names of five uh, players, we picked the names of five players from each team. So we put one team in one bowl, another team in another bowl, five names drawn from each bowl. That is obviously random, but it's a stratified random sample. Okay, stratified. All right, stratified random. Here is number six. It says a local coffee shop puts out ads asking for volunteers for a coffee tasting study. Okay, is this random or is this biased? Well, you're putting out ads. You're asking people to volunteer their time. The people who are likely to volunteer might love drinking coffee more. Maybe they spend tons of time in the coffee shop. When you're asking for volunteers, you can have all kinds of biases like that. So we could look at the definition, but we know that this is not random and we're asking for volunteers. So we know it has to be a voluntary biased sample or a biased sample that is voluntary. So biased, voluntary voluntary response. All right, so this lesson has centered around diving a little deeper into the types of random sampling we can have and the types of biased sampling we can have. In general, you, you never want to have biased sampling. Uh, and in general, you always want to have random sampling, but sometimes it gets very hard to do true random sampling. That's the honest truth, is if you're really going to study everybody in a country, for instance, then you really should ask people all over the place, like in every city or every age and every demographic. But in reality, that's even by itself, hundreds of thousands of people you would have to really ask. And even then you can't really do it. So sometimes we have to do slightly biased studies. It's not great, but sometimes that's the only way to get the data. And so we have to understand when we are collecting biased data, what kind of biases are we introducing? We try to avoid it, but we learn these things to try to understand what we're doing. And so we have these kinds of sampling uh, biases for and also random sampling uh, types that we learned here. So I'd like you to go through this again, make sure you understand. Follow me on the part two, we get a little more practice with learning the types of random and biased samples in statistics. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.